Hello, my friends, and welcome to another episode of Trends Analysis with Alice. I am very uncomfortable with how much that rhymes. I don't know what's been going on. It just feels like there's so many new TikTok trends and I want to comment on all of them. I just can't help it. Now, today's TikTok trend is something called de-influencing. Yes, you heard that right. You might be going, what the heck is de-influencing? And I'll save you some effort right now. If you look up the hashtag de-influencing, you might be going, wait, I still don't understand what this is. It kind of seems like a lot of people are defining this a little differently. I think it was supposed to be kind of like anti-hauls. You all remember anti-hauls. Kimberly Clark, Clark, Clark. Oh, I miss her so much. But when I was looking this up, I could not help but notice that a lot of the de-influencing videos were influencers just being influencers, kind of more of the buy this, not that type of videos, which I think is really funny as I've seen some articles on this topic popping up and saying, oh, this is the push back against over-consumerism that the world has needed. Meanwhile, depending on what you're watching, it sort of feels like, wait, isn't this just a regularly scheduled programming? Oh, by the way, I'm applying makeup in this video. I'm throwing it back old school to my style of, we're gonna have a chat for the first portion of the video, and if you would like to hear about some makeup products that, by the way, I think are all meh, perfect for this video, then you can stay to the end. If you're not interested in the makeup whatsoever, you can end the video there. But indeed, this sort of feels like it might just be another trend that is supposed to be something new and yet isn't new at all. Or is it? So in all truth, I think the best place to start this video, and some of you might be slightly annoyed with me for this, is to start with a definition of what influencing means because if we're talking about de-influencing, where's my chubby emu fans? De, meaning the reversal, should mean the reversal of whatever influencing is. So please do forgive me for this because I went to the dictionary for a definition of influence. And I, what I thought was so interesting is that the dictionary defines the word influence around the word power. To quote, power to sway or affect based on prestige, wealth, ability, or position. Isn't that such a good definition? I feel like you might have pictured maybe one of the Kardashians. So sorry for both of us. But there's your prestige, there's your wealth, maybe you're more into skincare and you pictured a YouTube dermatologist, there's your ability and your position. And I feel like what's so great about this definition is that it really demonstrates why some people do not like to be defined by the word influencer, right? How many people, self-included, would much rather be called content creators? There's kind of an ickiness inherent in saying that you do hold some kind of power over other people. But I do think that we do recognize that there is power in this influencer position. But moreover, you might notice something really interesting in that definition. It certainly doesn't say that it is limited to TikTok, YouTube, what have you. No, not at all. That definition, the idea of an influencer could be a lot bigger. And in fact, I would say it absolutely is. I absolutely do not think that being an influencer is something new. It's just the platforms upon which you see influencers is very different. Listen, in my time, it was magazines that were influencing us. We would gather around Seventeen magazine, D Delia's catalogs. Oh my goodness but also celebrities. Celebrities have always been influencers. I think you can probably go back even farther in history, and I'm sure that kings and queens were influencers of their time. And yet the idea of the modern day influencer, most people would probably say, well, it's not quite the same as a king and a queen, Alice. And sure, it's not, it's something new in that uh, everything around the concept is new. Maybe queens were influential in getting women to buy corsets back in ye olden times, but you couldn't just go on Amazon Prime and order your corset in 1756. No, you would have to have it custom made, whereas now you can have that same kind of situation. In fact, I think there are influencers for corsets, probably, but you can, in fact, Amazon Prime those corsets. So I think what is really interesting is that at this point, we've come full circle in terms of 
exactly the reason why these articles are praising this de-influencing trend. They're saying, oh, this is a great way to offset excess consumerism. But is the problem really influencers or is the problem the availability of excess consumerism? Again, this is something that has never existed in the way that it does now. And what I really think is to blame is the speed of everything. The instant gratification that is available to us in modern times is something that we have just never ever seen before. Influencers, that's old news, it's old news. But the impact that influencing can have in a world of so many products can be pretty big. I just accidentally gave away a little bit of my later points. Did you catch me putting some amount of blame on influencers? Yeah, I actually, I'm just gonna tell you at this point in the video, I think that's actually fair. I'm not gonna be somebody who lives my life in denial. I absolutely do think that we are overusing our resources. I absolutely do. I agree with the scientists who study that. And in another aspect of human nature, we do have a little bit of a tendency to find a source of blame. Influencers are an easy target. I'm not gonna let them off the hook completely. You will see. But I would also say there's a few other things you could blame. You could for one thing, I've seen people blame themselves. I see that a lot, actually. I see people blame their friends, their neighbors, capitalism as a system. And here's something I've never been able to figure out. I can't figure out why it is that when you see people talk about who is to blame, they do single in onto one of those elements. Why don't we ever take a step back and say, maybe all of these factors are contributing? Am I wrong or is that the only way we can have an honest conversation? We have to look at every one of these elements. It's so funny to me, sometimes, you know, when an influencer is getting a lot of the blame, they'll start saying, well, you have to take accountability for your own actions. And yeah, you do, but that doesn't mean that the influencer's actions don't play into the decisions that you make. I've said it before and I will say it again, we don't live in a vacuum. We are influenced by all kinds of things, some consciously, some subconsciously. And I think that it, trying to put all of the blame onto one thing really does a disservice to us in that we do fail to look at the bigger picture. And that does indeed bring us to probably what you clicked this video for. I am in fact going to put some of the blame onto influencers. Quite frankly, I think that influencers have a responsibility to do a good job of reviewing products. And frankly, I don't always see that. I feel like this ties a lot into an older video that I made talking about my problem with short form content, which of course I made that video because pretty much all of your favorite YouTubers also made that video, right? But it seemed like a lot of people were in agreement about this, not necessarily in that short form equals bad. I don't think it's always a bad thing. But in this idea of, remember when Instagram was trying to completely revamp itself to be nothing but reels and we hated it? See, in the end, I'm so glad that pushback happened because Instagram did actually go back to just allowing regular posts. And listen, I like regular posts. I've always liked regular posts. I really appreciate the Instagrammers who write out a whole bunch of thoughts as an accompaniment to their photo. It's kind of a, a, a picture and a blog post in one. I love that. And it seemed like we were about to lose that. Thankfully, we haven't. I do like that. It's not, is that really short form? I don't know if it is because it, it kind of, it can take a while to read those, but I love them. And the whole reason for that pushback that YouTubers had is that we cannot clearly communicate all of our thoughts on products in short form. We really can't. We can do certain things in short form, like swatches, like demos, but we can't convey everything that you would in, in terms of a, a review of a product. And again, I think that is the part that influencers have to acknowledge is their job. You know how influencers have gotten in trouble for saying things like, oh, being an influencer is such hard work. Well, if it is such hard work, then that means you should be doing a job and doing it well. And again, that's, that's kind of been the problem. I watched a YouTube video of somebody reviewing some TikTok brands and they said something that just really resonated with me. I realized a lot of what the problem with this short form content is. They said that on TikTok, it's 
almost as though absolutely nobody ever wants to put out a negative opinion on a product. Think about this. Remember that trend of uh, things I didn't like, products I didn't like, and then people would start applying products and they would go, oh, this, this mascara, it just gives you the best lashes in the world. It lasts all day. It's just horrible. All of us normal people were over here watching this going, wait, what? What? Ugh. I hated that trend. <laughs> Hear me out. As a YouTuber, this is so bizarre to me. You, you know, you know that I will tell you all the time, including in today's video, when I don't like a product, including when products were gifted to me, it just is kind of reminiscent of 2017 YouTube. We actually dealt with all of this six years ago on YouTube. But what's so interesting is that on YouTube, people even kind of explain why, you know, TikTokers don't have enough time to explain why. On YouTube, you would hear people say things like, oh, I don't wanna get kicked off the PR list. Knew it, knew there had to be a reason why all these people were allergic to negative opinions. And people got mad, there were all kinds of drama channels exposing YouTubers, and it led to a whole new world of YouTube where people actually do give negative opinions, do give honest opinions. It doesn't just mean that we're over here saying, oh, these products are terrible, but rather that we are describing them and describing what we liked as well as what we didn't so that you, as viewers, can be more informed buyers. And one thing I do have to keep in mind is that TikTok is a younger platform. YouTube has been around for a while. We've had a lot more time to learn and to grow. So as TikTok learns and grows in the same way that YouTube creators already went through all of this, I think that this, this new de-influencing trend is great. I think it's great, but I think it is what it should have been all along, and that is finally giving honest opinions. Finally giving helpful reviews. Oh, please make this be a trend that never goes away because that's what we as customers should want honest, helpful reviews so that we, again, can be more informed buyers. That's the goal. But there is one more thing that I want to say. It won't surprise any of you that watch this channel that I want to add this, and that is the importance of the words that we choose. So in case you missed it, and by the way, you haven't, Michaela is currently experiencing some drama around a L'Oreal mascara review that she did on TikTok. And what's so interesting is that when I loaded up this video to watch it, I could not believe in the opening of this video, she says one of the things that I absolutely hate to see influencers and content creators alike say, and that was, "You, li this literally just changed my life. This changed my life. No, it didn't. It didn't, Michaela. Well, now it probably did. Let me tell you something honestly. In this video today, I have all kinds of makeup products. Honestly, not a single one of these has ever changed my life. Techniques, techniques for applying makeup, that's a little different. Some of those actually have been quite the game changer, but the products themselves, no, none of them have ever changed my life. Now, you know I talk about skincare more, and as somebody with acne-prone skin, I will admit to you there are a handful of products, asterisk, that have changed my life, but really, it's actually just the ingredients in those, and you can probably name them. You should know. You should know by now if you watch this channel. Adapalene, which again, there's several different product options you can buy that contain that. Uh, benzoyl peroxide cleanser, several different options, and snail mucin, again. <laughs> You don't just have to buy the Cosrx. But that's it, three products, and even in saying that those were game-changing for me personally, I still hope that I acknowledge often that that is only because, first of all, I have acne, and acne is difficult. But secondly, that doesn't mean they're gonna change everyone's life. But here's the thing, to say that something changed your life is really, really a lot of emphasis on how much you love that product. So it is very disingenuous for every video a creator makes to start with this product changed my life. Well, how many products are gonna change your life? And along with that, there's another phrase that I really think just needs to go into the garbage can, and that is anytime an influencer goes, 
You guys need to buy this. Oh. See, my point here is that words do have power and influencers have power. Remember, we defined that earlier in this video. And so it is important to make sure that you as an influencer are choosing words that are not having a subconscious effect on your viewers. I believe that words have meaning, which is the exact reason why I'm hard on companies that claim to have a retinol product with no retinol. You, you know, you've seen it on this channel. Words have meaning. So if influencers are choosing to say things like, you need to buy this right now, do you really know that that person needs to buy that? What if that person who is watching that video is on a very tight budget and many of us are right now? Do you really think they need to buy that instead of buying, I don't know, dinner? I just find it shady. I don't like that kind of phrasing. That is definitely the kind of phrasing that helps me figure out who I want to follow and who I don't. Because again, words have meaning influencers. Anyway, that's about all I wanted to say on this de-influencing trend. I do feel like this video could come off as a little anti-influencer. And so of course I want to make sure to say, I think there are some amazing influencers who get this and have been doing things right all along. Some of my personal favorites, I really like Hannah Louise Poston. I love her channel. She actually focuses a lot more on kind of being a mindful consumer, which I think is a great way to create content because no matter what, when you watch influencers, we have so much stuff because we review so much stuff that should help you to buy less. But I think there's a danger of uh, just seeing so much kind of becoming a bit more normalized and people thinking, oh, I'm supposed to have 300 eyeshadow palettes because everyone I see on YouTube does. So I really appreciate any kind of conversations on being a mindful consumer. I also, you all know I love Lab Muffin. She has never been somebody who is shy about saying when she thinks a company isn't doing something right. Okay, that's makeup, skincare, hair care. Sheree Del Sol, oh my goodness, I love her channel so much and we have not at all the same hair type. She has curly hair. And yet I love watching her videos because she is so honest. She is so willing to have the conversations that we should all be having. Anyway, that's a handful of channel recommendations for you. Feel free to comment some of your favorites. Maybe we can find some new honest channels to watch together. That sounds amazing. And I did promise I was going to review this makeup look that I did today. It's really basic, but this is honestly what I've been doing. Why do I have so many bright and intense eyeshadow palettes when this is this is the makeup look I've been defaulting towards. See, that's another element of makeup. The trends change, your preferences change, and you don't want to spend two hours doing makeup anymore. I bought way too much in that 2017 era of makeup YouTube. Anyway, let me talk about some of these products. So I want to start with this Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk. I'm so stinking glad I bought the mini size of this because let me tell you honestly, this was probably the most popular foundation quite a few years ago. I finally decided, well, now that they have minis, I was like, let me just try a mini of it. This is shade three. Not sure it's a perfect match, but it works. Uh, it's just, it's really just fine. I think the problem that I'm having with this foundation is that I've tried some new formulas and I'm telling you, technology behind products gets better and better every year. And as a consequence, even these really expensive foundations that are utilizing older technology don't feel as good in comparison to me as genuinely, sorry, I know I talked about this in Friday's video as well, but this Revlon Illuminance Foundation, I genuinely think this is better. But that does make sense because we're talking about a product that was the best of its time and the times have changed. They've changed. There are better ways to make foundation apparently in 2023. And this is just my personal opinion, but I feel if you have never tried this and you have bought some of the new more popular foundations, including the House Labs foundation, which I also think is better, uh, you probably don't need to buy this. I don't think you're missing anything now. You may have been missing something in 2017, maybe, but now, oh no. Issa Maya, what is this product even called? This is Skin Lac Q, a triple hyaluronic glow serum. It is meant to be a primer or you can put it on top of your makeup. <laughs> First of all, can I ask where this brand came from? Because there just went from no mention, no mention, and suddenly everybody was talking about this Issa Maya brand. 
I did also see Hannah Louise Poston make a review on this brand and it was, you know, it was interesting. So I received this in PR. It is a $78 product and I've got to be honest because that's how I roll. I'm just kind of underwhelmed by it. Again, this isn't, this isn't bad products. These are products where it's just I'm, I'm a little underwhelmed. And maybe partially this is because I typically talk about skincare and how to make a skincare enthusiast bored in 2023. Ooh, a hyaluronic acid primer. <sighs> maybe in the makeup world, people are going, oh yeah, yeah, hydraulic acid. I've heard I want that. I think I also want niacinamide. Niacinamide, niacinamide. So yeah, it's just not super exciting for me to hear that that is now in a primer product. The other thing is it's an illuminating glowy product. Do you know how many of these are on the market at this point? I have two in front of me that are similar. One from Natasha Denona. Look, it, you can see how similar these two are. I also, for some reason, bought the Tula Filter Primer in the 21 Days of Beauty. It looks exactly the same as well. <laughs> And this is always something that I will critique on, on companies. This one is on companies, in my opinion. I think that if you can't come out with something new and innovative, why bother at all? We just don't need a million primers that look, feel, and act identical. I'm okay with a few. I'm okay with there being multiple different options. If one is sold out at your store, good, you can go grab another one, but it does hit a point of oversaturation. I feel like I've talked about most of these products at some point, but just to give you some really quick updates, the Laura Mercier Caviar Sticks, I finally decided these are fine. I like them. They're quick and effortless, but I do ultimately like the Bobbi Brown ones a bit more. I think that the Bobbi Brown version is just a little bit more flattering on my skin. This one, it's just a little bit more almost kind of thick in the way it sits on my skin. This is a kind of me doing that by this, not that thing, but you know, they're both optional. Elf also has some really nice dupes for these kind of products. The Lancome Idol Ultra Precise Waterproof Liner. I talked about this before, I know I did. The only update I have with this is that I haven't changed my opinion at all. I still think that this got pretty bad reviews because it is terrible for drawing a wing, but I also think it's kind of fussy. I I think it's just that the tip of it is too flexible and you don't want the tip of your eyeliner to, or liquid eyeliner in particular, to be too floppy. It's a shame because it is one of the darkest eyeliners I've ever used in my life, but it's finicky. And I think I just kind of expected more from Lancome. Milk's Kush Mascara, it's a beautiful mascara, but it flakes. It flakes a lot on me through the day. Milk is one of those companies where I like everything they do in theory. In practice, I feel like so few of their products have actually worked out for me. The Charlotte Tilbury, beautiful, did I just say berry? I just said Tilbury, didn't I? Put that right with the hydraulic acid. The Beautiful Skin Radiant Concealer. Okay, so I was neutral on this for a while and I've kind of finally figured out what I don't like about this. First of all, a radiant concealer is something that sounds so nice in theory, but it really depends on how it's done in practice. This one has glitter in it. it it really does actually have small glitter particles in it. I feel like I was in denial about this for a while and then one day I was out in the sunlight, which is really where you see everything, and I, I was looking in the mirror going, there's glitter in this. Why is there glitter in a concealer? I used a mini today of the Tarte Breezy Cream Blush in the shade Peach Sunset and there's nothing wrong with it, it's fine. What I wanna say is on the topic of cream blushes as a whole, I think it is so funny, so funny to think that, again going back to 2017 YouTube, how many powder blushes do all of you own? If you were into makeup at that time, the answer is most likely a lot. The trends changed and we started buying cream blushes instead. And I realized in looking at my collection that I have now done the thing that I did with powder blushes where I now have a ton of cream blushes, many in identical colors to the powder blushes I have, many at this point in the same colors as other cream blushes. It's funny how we can be convinced that we have to buy into a new trend, even if it's still blush. And you know the trends are gonna change again. You know we are gonna go back to powder blush, right? And all of our cream blushes, because of their nature, they're all gonna go bad. At least with powder blushes, they last 
a long time. Anyway, I've sworn off buying any more cream blushes because I don't want to watch more products go bad on me. I actually love the Patrick Ta bronzer that I used, but that is because you can barely tell that I applied bronzer. That is perfectly up my alley, but I very much think most people will probably not like that. Probably not. And then finally, the Dior, what is this called? Dior Addict Lip Maximizer. This is a product I was sent by Influencer, and it's so funny. I feel like Influencer reviews are pretty universally hated by everybody who doesn't get products from Influencer. <laughs> because it suffers from the same fate as we were talking about throughout this whole video, only there isn't uh, more time to process more, uh, you know, feedback from viewers and followers in terms of how you're doing with your reviews. Instead, it's just, oh, I got this thing for free. I've got to go on the website and give a five-star review and say it's the best thing ever. And yet I've actually seen people, and you know the little community tab in Influencer, I've seen people in there saying, oh my gosh, I got this product and I don't like it at all. What do I do? Well, write a review saying that. You are in no way obligated to write a positive review. In fact, this is a privilege. It is a privilege to be sent a product to review because you can share your honest opinions with anybody on that Sephora page trying to figure out if they should buy it or not. Anyway, my opinion with this is I don't hate it, but I honestly, I don't see the hype personally. This could be a personal preference thing. As some of you might know, I do like peptide-based plumping products. With peptides, you don't see plumping immediately. Instead, it's that it's encouraging collagen production in your lips so that you have kind of smoother lips, fewer lip lines. That's what I look for in a lip plumper. I don't like the stinging sensation or the cooling or the minty. I don't, I don't like any of that. And while I will give Dior credit for having some of that but dialing it back a bit, it still means it's not my favorite product. And I'm, I'm frankly perplexed as to why Dior didn't go in the direction of peptides. I feel like that's gonna be, I feel like that's just growing in popularity. Instead, it just seems like they went in the middle, which I, I, I will admit that's a safe route. You're gonna have people that don't like the Too Faced lip injection like this a lot more. But at the same time, I think that I personally would have liked to see them commit to the newer technologies a little bit more than they did with this. It's still, it's still beautiful packaging. I think it looks really fancy and you are allowed to like it for that reason if you do. There's some quick makeup reviews that I haven't done for a while and that's it for this video as well. As always, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe. Have a wonderful week and I will see you all next time.